Right? Once the food enters into the stomach, what is the role of the stomach? All right? It's to take the food and turn it into what's called a semi-liquid chyme. That's number one. All right? You're trying to liquefy it, all right? number one. Number two, you're going to begin to break down the food all right, with the first treatment of acid and enzymes. You're going to disinfect because the acid is going to kill any microbes that are in there, hopefully. All right. And ultimately, the stomach is going to deliver that food into the small intestine in a timely manner. And what I mean by that is not as quickly as possible, but rather in a way that allows the small intestine to receive that food and process it e efficiently. All right? And so depending upon what's in the food that you eat, all right, if the food is very liquid and high in carbohydrates, eh, it's going to pass out from the stomach into the small intestine quickly. But if it's high in protein and fat and very solid in texture, the stomach's going to take its time. All right? How many of you have eaten a steak? You know, if you don't eat one regularly, if you eat a steak at about two or three in the morning, you still feel like it's right there in your stomach, right? All right? Because that's hard to digest. So your stomach's going to take its time. All right? Okay, so um, okay, we've talked about then the bolus of food coming in, all right, and turning it into a, a semi liquid chyme. All right, we're going to um, begin digestion with mechanically mixing the food, all right, and mixing it with the gastric juices. The stomach is, is a little different than the other cross sections because it actually has a third layer, all right, in addition to the inner circular and outer long longitudinal. It has an innermost oblique layer, all right, and what that innermost oblique layer is doing with the other two layers is that the food that's in the stomach is going to do this. It's going to take the food and it's going to move it back and forth and back and forth, mixing it, all right? So three layers of muscle here. Outer longitudinal, inner circular, and innermost oblique, running diagonal to the other two layers, all right? And that allows you to do this mixing action, all right? We can look at the stomach and label different regions of it, and we do this only because the histology of these regions is a little different. The fundus, the cardia right next to the lower esophageal sphincter, all right, the body of the stomach, and then this region right near the exit of the stomach, the pylorus, okay, the pylorus, and then the sphincter here is called the pyloric sphincter, all right. Um, we've already talked about this is then, this is the lesser curvature here. Right? And it has a lesser omentum that connects from the lesser curvature to the liver on this side. All right? And on this side, on the greater curvature, you have that apron hanging down, the greater omentum off of the, off of the greater curvature of the stomach. All right? Inside the stomach, you have these many folds, all right? These are folds that you can see with your naked eye. This is like little corrugations on the surface of the, of the stomach. They're called gastric folds, or the other name for them is rugae, all right? Rugae. And for those of you that speak Spanish, what's the word for wrinkles? Arrugas. There you go. There's your rugae, all right? Arrugas. All right, so there's your wrinkles, all right. Very little absorption takes place in the stomach, all right. Your stomach can absorb water, and it can absorb a few other odds and ends like alcohol, aspirin, barbiturates, all right. All right, that's a party right there, all right. Not a good idea, all right. As you can imagine, if you... If you're consuming alcohol, you're able to absorb it right across your stomach, so it's going into your system pretty quickly, all right? It's not going to be delayed by having to go into the large intestine and so forth, all right? Um, and at now, you know, the adage, you know, don't drink on an empty stomach. You can see how that would also affect the ability to absorb alcohol across the wall of the stomach. If you have food in there, you have other contents that are mixing with the alcohol versus just whatever it is you drank. So um, it's all bad, you know that just killing brain cells. All right, stomach histology, all right? So uh, if we look at the histology of the stomach, a typical glands, all right, we see the surface of the stomach here, 
The stomach does not have villi. It does not have those little finger-like projections that we talk about in the small intestine. Instead, it has pits, all right? And those gastric pits open down into glands, all right? So that's what you see here. This is the surface of the stomach. It's going to be coated with mucus to protect it from the acids. And you have these glands that descend down into the stomach, all right? And among the cells that are found in these glands, you see these four different cell types. Five different cell types, sorry. Surface mucus cells, all right, which are exactly what the name implies. They're cells that make mucus, all right, which is very important in protecting the surface of the, of the gut from the acids. You don't want to be digesting your own stomach, right? Um, mucus neck cells are simply the same mucus producing cells, but they're found down as we descend down into the gastric gland instead of on the surface, all right? Parietal cells are cells that specialize in making acid, hydrochloric acid, and they make something else called intrinsic factor that allows you to absorb vitamin B12 in your, in your small intestine. All right. Chief cells make an enzyme that digests proteins. All right. So, oh, there we go. There's our second digestive function, right? We began digesting carbohydrates in the mouth with salivary amylase, and now protein that is exposed to the acid in the stomach will unfold, and then pepsin will begin to chop up those proteins into smaller bits, all right, into smaller chains of amino acids that can later be fully digested, all right? So we continue the digestion, specifically here acting on proteins, all right? And that the protein uh, digesting enzyme is called pepsin. It's produced in an inactive form called pepsinogen, and then once it gets into the gut and is exposed to the acids, it actually is converted into the active form. And that makes sense. You wouldn't want to make the active enzyme inside of your cells because then you'll digest your own cells, right? So instead, you make it in inactive form. You release it from the cells. It's in the lumen. And when it's in the lumen, it's converted into its active form. Pepsinogen goes to pepsin, all right? And finally, scattered throughout, you have these what are called enteroendocrine cells. And any time we use the word entero, we're talking about the gut. Enteric is relating to the gut. So enteroendocrine is cells in the gut that are endocrine, that produce hormones, all right? And the hormone that's produced by these is called gastrin. Gastrin. And gastrin serves to alert the stomach that, hey, there's protein here in the stomach. Let's produce more acid. Let's produce more enzymes. Let's increase the motility. All right, let's get the muscles working and mixing. So this is the system's little onboard way of recognizing uh, what's going on, right? Uh, and responding to what's going on in terms of the food that's in the gut, right? I don't want to say a lot about gastric ulcers, but just real quickly, um, if the acid is able to erode its way through the mucosa, all right, then you begin to have an ulceration. You are exposing what? The connective tissue layer, right? You're exposing the submucosa, which has the blood supply in it and has nerves and so forth, all right? So that's what an ulcer is, is when you begin to erode or penetrate through the mucosa. And of course, that can go all the way through and even... Uh, lead to a perforation where you go all the way through the wall of the stomach, all right? Pretty nasty stuff. Now, scientists, or clinicians really, not scientists so much, but clinicians have always said that, that these ulcers are a, a function of stress and, you know, acid and drinking too much coffee and blah, blah, blah. About a decade ago, a little more than, all right, a young scientist said, I think they are the result of a bacterial infection. And everybody said, yeah, right. You know, we've been treating ulcers with anti-acids, antacids for decades, all right? And you're telling us that we can treat ulcers with antibiotics? And they didn't believe him, so he took a glass, threw some Heliobacter pylori bacteria from a bacterial culture and drank it down, all right? And that guy got some severe gastric ulcers. All right, and then he took some antibiotics, 